it's really weird that we're in a position where a group from one religion is at war with a group from another religion over a holy claim to sacred land, which is being financed by a group from a third religion because of an ancient prophecy. And yet there are still people going, well, I don't think we need to bring religion into this conversation. Right, that's, that, but that's just where we are. The very idea of faulting a religion for being used for precisely the thing religions were invented to be used for is so unthinkable to a huge part of this country that pointing to the religious angle of what could be most accurately described as a holy war is frowned upon. It's presented as the overly simplistic explanation, the dumb man's approximation for the actual causes, which are all very secular and geopolitical and realpolitik and stuff like that. And, and yes, there are a myriad of entirely secular reasons for the war in Israel right now. And yes, without secular interests undermining peace initiatives, without state interests that couldn't give a less enthusiastic fuck about who Allah meant to give that city to, without self-interest just looking for a way to turn profits or expand their sphere of influence, none of this could be happening. But that's also true of the various religious motivations. Because none of those secular entities could sell their war to the populace if it wasn't for its religious underpinnings. Now, many are inclined to favor religion in this equation and say it's simply a tool being used or even misused by secular powers to get their way. But that's not accurate, right? It would be at least as accurate to say that the various state interests and profit motives are a tool being used by religious powers to get their way. We, we talked about this recently in terms of the way it affects our domestic policies, but it's certainly no different in the sphere of foreign policy, Right. The only way to exempt religion from culpability in this situation is to decide to do so in advance of consideration. I mean, even if you set aside the very real and pertinent religious roots of the problem and simply consider it as a tool being employed by secular authorities, it's not like you've cleared its name. Because here's the thing about religious differences. They're intractable. There is no God, and thus nobody qualified to adjudicate rival holy claims. Religious differences are also absolute. Right? You can't settle for half of what one God wants and half of what the other God wants. It's an all or nothing proposition. Either you abide by God's design or you don't. And anything shy of absolute victory is an insult to God's authority. That's why the status quo will never be good enough, even for the winning side, regardless of how much they're winning by, unless it's everything. God said all of the land was ours, not half, not three quarters, not 90 percent of it. And of course, at the same time, on the ground level, God is skewing the calculus for all the people being recruited into the battle. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are secular things worth fighting and dying for. There are levels of oppression where you can logically justify risking your life or even a small chance at changing them. But the second somebody starts adding posthumous rewards into the conversation, they're skewing that math in favor of the risk. Few things cheapen life more than war. But one of those few things is the promise of a glorious afterlife. Now, some people will point out, well, you know, if religion wasn't there, the hawks and the warmongers, they'd have found some other means of achieving the same thing. And maybe that's true, right? Like we used political ideology for the Cold War, and that works so well that fully a third of Americans are equal parts terrified of and unable to define socialism, right? But you're never going to find something that's more effective than religion. Religion was specifically honed for this purpose by evolution. It's, its primary function is to otherize the outgroup while unifying the in-group. So the people trying to forgive religion by pointing out that other tools could do the same shit are a little different than the people who oppose gun control on the grounds of their ability to kill a motherfucker with a shovel. Religion's ability to exacerbate a problem is unrivaled. There's nothing like it in the world. It makes hate worse. It makes prejudice worse. It makes war worse. I can think of literally no thing that is so bad it cannot be made worse by adding religion, and I'm a pretty creative guy. But that doesn't mean it's always an additive, right? Sometimes it's the whole fucking problem. Sometimes it's both the fuel and the fire. Sometimes it's both the root and the branch. And in those instances, even when there's other shit in between the root and branch, it's still wholly responsible for the fruit that it bears.